Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the important parts of C++ 17, and this is going to be the fourth episode in this series. I have covered C++ 98, 11, 14, and now we're on to 17. Now, if you're wondering when the episode for C++ 20 is going to come out, it will be sometime after C++ 20 has been released, and we know exactly what is going to end up in that version of the language. So this, again, is basically just my scratch pad. It is a place for me to type at the moment. The number one thing that I want to mention is guaranteed copy elision. Now, that's uh, copy and move elision. It's a concept that was originally a copy that may have been elided, and then in C11 became a move that may have been elided, and now is guaranteed to be elided. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate this. I have a factory. I want to create some sort of widget. I have my memory header. My fancy integer widget coming out of my factory. Overly simplistic view of, of the point here, but the idea is that I can create a new widget and I know at no point Am I going to have a copy or a move occur of this object? This is a unique pointer. It can't be copied anyhow. I don't have to call standard move, and I never would have in the first place. But what we know is that this widget right here is going to be created in place. Now, for something like a unique pointer, that doesn't seem terribly exciting. But for other more complicated things, it is. The next most interesting thing to me is the beginnings of constexpr support in the standard library. Now let's just browse through a couple of things here. So if we look at the containers and standard array, and I'm on cppreference.com, and start to look at a couple of things like the bracket operator. In C17, the non-const bracket operator for standard array becomes constexpr. There's no reason why it couldn't have been constexpr in C14. C14, we got just the const version becoming constexpr. This was before uh, we were, as a community, really appreciating the usefulness of constexpr. So we get the non-const operator in C17. That's great. And if we scroll down into the algorithms library and pick, um, let's see, like the min-max algorithms. Let's look at those. Max element. Max element becomes constexpr in C17. So we start to get a feel for these constexpr things here. And then similarly, we get constexpr lambdas. Now, in a recent episode that I recorded on variable templates for C14, we see where I made the mistake of trying to use a lambda in a constexpr context in C14, and we couldn't, but that's handy. So now, if we really want to, and believe me, there are use cases for this, it particularly comes up with using lambdas in algorithms, which is basically impossible in C14 in a constexpr context, and in C17, it's nice and easily, trivially an option. So I can just create this constexpr lambda here, and then I could call it in a constexpr context if I wanted to. Now, the next thing I want to mention is standard string view. Has its own header. I've demonstrated this in plenty other episodes. You also get it if you get to the string header. 
And we can do things like Now, this is a const expert thing, and it is a, it's a view into a string. It's a non-allocating view into a string. This is really handy for keeping our APIs clean so we're not passing around and creating strings just for the fun of it all the time when we really just need a view onto a string. Now, you do have to be careful with it because we do have the possibility of um, accidentally creating a string from a string view from a string from a string view and doing a whole lot more work than necessary. But if you know that you're only ever going to view this string and you don't need to pass it along to something else, string view is a great option. Class template argument deduction. In C++14, if I wanted a standard array, of an int with five values, I would have to spell all that out. Like this. Now, C17, these things can be automatically deduced. Class template argument deduction has its pitfalls, like most things in C++. But this is really, really helpful. It's particularly helpful with standard array. It's my favorite use case for it. And now we have fold expressions. If you don't do a lot of like variadic template work, this might be a little lost as to why you would care about this. But you can write code like this, and then we can do things like this. And it's a variadic template function with a fold expression. Of course, I can't have more than one main. So let's get rid of this main up here. It's the problem of using this as a scratch pad but we can add these values and return them from main and it all just uh, happens at compile time of expanding all these types here and I could add things of many different types together if that made sense. There we go. Return 28 from main. Now the next thing that I'd meant to, like to mention is structured bindings. These are handy. They're handy particularly for like pairs of things, for like working with maps, for example. But let's go ahead and just look at the simplest case. I can have a pair of two values, and then I can structure, use structured bindings to get them back out again in a named way. Fairly straightforward. And this can be used, uh, it really does make some things much handier for accessing values that are in something like a pair or a struct or whatever. It's a big topic, something to be aware of. And then finally, the last feature that you need to be aware of is if init expressions. And these um, can make reading code different than you expect in some cases, but let's just go ahead and do this. I'm gonna take this value from my structured bindings and put it in here. Now, this is not going to compile because I can't have an if statement outside of a function. So I'm just going to do this. And now in this case, I'm accessing the global value. So don't write code like this, but we can do something like this. Now, this is our if init expression right here. 
where we are saying this is a set of local variables that are valid for the entire scope of this if block and this is the actual expression that we want to conditionally switch on for our if statement. So uh, there you have it. That's the, I think, most eight most important things that I think you should know about when learning about C++17 and getting up to speed with it. Of course, many other things, many standard library changes and other core language features, but these are the things that will get you going with C++17. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly.